Hey here Factory once again, my name is Dave and I'm here to bring you the next big answer for this week from the Workington location. Hope you're having a great time on your time off from school. What are some of the things that you've been up to so far? Have you been playing out with your friends? Maybe you've been doing some crafts indoors? Or maybe you've been out on the beach enjoying the weather building sandcastles? Well, today in Hero Factory, we're going to do the final week of our series where we've been looking at the fruits of the spirit. Can any of you remind me of some of the different aspects we've been looking at out of each of the different weeks? Can anyone remember any of them? Well, some of them are love on week one, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness, faithfulness, and that leads us with just two more to do this week. Does anyone know what the final words that, we, words that we've been looking at this week? Well, let's read out the memory verse we've been looking at and see if we can see from there. If you want to read along, if you can remember it, the verse is, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. So which two have we got left? Well, we've got gentleness and self-control. You might not be sure what each of those are, so I'm going to quickly go through what they are. So gentleness is showing uh, having a gentle heart and being loving to others. This is not just shown by our thoughts, but by the way that we interact with people around us. Shown to love to others even when they've done wrong. And you might hear gentle and think that doesn't sound the best of things when you're always told to be tough and hard. But in biblical terms, as a Christian, it comes from a point of strength because we are told that by showing this control, uh, we are not having anger against somebody and when they feel that they fully deserve it. So when you feel that someone's done something really wrong, we have to be gentle, we are told in the Bible, to have the control for that. And then the easiest way of describing self-control is using the example of some sweets or even a chocolate bar being put in front of you. Imagine you've been put in front of you like that and self-control is not eating the whole entire packet or entire chocolate bar all at once it may be eating a little bit at a time or if you've really got a lot of self-control maybe even not eating any of it at all and waiting for the right time to do it so in the bible we're going to look at two characters we're going to look at first of all king Saul and second of all David and the passage is in 1 Samuel 24 if you want to look it up later on. King Saul did not like David over here. He was very jealous about what his people the Israelites thought of David. We found out in earlier chapters it said this as they danced this is the people they sang Saul slain thousands and David tens of thousands and Saul was very angry at what they had said because they credited David for ten thousands more than only a thousand for what Saul had done so we can see how very angry Saul was at this point and Saul was that angry and got that wound up by David that he wanted to go out to kill him and that was his plan and he tried to do that on quite a number of occasions where he tried to go out to kill David. So it comes to the story now where David's trying to get killed by uh, Saul and what happened is it takes 3,000 of his own people Saul to try and find David. He finds out that David's in a certain location, so he goes after him. And what happens is, just before he gets to the location, Saul decides to have a nap. 
decided to have a little bit of a rest before it goes on. It goes into a cave to do this. What Sol didn't realise was David was actually at the back of the cave where Sol was staying. And David's men, who was helping him, found out that Sol was there. And David's men said these words. This is the day the Lord spoke when he said to you, I will give enemies into your hands. So they were trying to convince David that this was his, this was his time to go after Saul. What he'd been waiting for all this time, that he would be able to go after the person who was trying to kill him. But what David did, instead of going to kill him, is he took his knife and went and took a bit off the part of his robe, off the side of Saul's uh, robe, basically showing I could have, what I could have done. I've been here, found you, and this is what I could have done. Is that something you expect David to do, or do you think that he was probably going to go after him and kill him? It's quite a unique thing for David to do, to show that much mercy towards Saul. What happens is, David starts feeling guilty. He says, what have I done? What have I done to Saul? And he realises that Saul was God's anointed. He was the one that he had said was going to be, uh, was his king. And even though David has been told that he was going to be king after Saul, he still knows that he didn't, shouldn't take anything into his own hands. So what David did... From a distance from Paul, so from far away from Saul, sorry, not Paul, far away from Saul, he shouted at him and said, basically, I'm sorry for what I've done. I thought that the Lord had delivered me into your hands and I've come and cut off a rope, side of your robe, but didn't kill you. And I'm sorry for what I've done for trying to avenge you. <coughs> So, realising that it was David from a distance, said to him, Is that your voice, my son David? You are more righteous than I am. You have treated me well, and I have treated you so badly. You could have done to me and what you wanted and delivered me, but you did what was right. And what we can take from this story is, David here could have done what is maybe most people would have done and took vengeance on Saul for what he'd done. But David himself had the gentleness and self-control to not do that. He realised that God is in control and he should not take anger on Saul. How in our lives can we do that this week? How can we show people the same self-control that David did? Yes, we might not be wanting to kill somebody, but we might want to get angry with somebody. So I just want to challenge you this week, how can we be like David and show self-control? I'm just going to pray as we finish. Lord God, we just thank you for the fruits of the Spirit we've been able to look at. And we just thank you that you have given us this opportunity for the fruits of the Spirit to be able to have all these different characteristics. I pray you be with us this week that we'll be able to show gentleness and self-control. Amen. Thank you for listening and we'll see you all soon. Bye.